Well, go on, beautiful souls. I am Marcia C., the host of Her Sacred Soul Space podcast. In this safe space, we have discussions that ignite our hearts and expand our souls. This is a podcast dedicated to all women and is coined with spiritual and metaphysical aspects of evolving herself and aligning her purpose to her soul. Having a soul connection with oneself is the portal to life. And you can consider this podcast your stepping stone. There is a beautiful spark that occurs when goddesses embrace and empower each other's light. And that's what we are all about here on Her Sacred Soul Space podcast, Her Soul Connection. Look out for new episodes with Soul Gems every second and fourth Fridays. And remember, see your light, be your light. And welcome back to another episode of Her Sacred Soul Space. As a breast cancer blessing, for me, October is all about pink hearts because it is indeed Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so here on this platform, on Her Sacred Soul Space, we are going to highlight her pink light as we share stories, as we hold space for those sisters who are now going through that journey, whether it is that they have just been diagnosed or whether they are on their treatment or even surgery. And some of her sisters who have just finished completing both treatments and surgery, but are in a space of now what? Where do I go? How do I connect back with me or find the new version of me? And so I am absolutely delighted to have with me on this episode, Pastor Carolyn Lewis. And not only is she a beautiful pastor, (laughs) she's also a breast cancer survivor or blessings, as I love to call us, and also a life coach. So thank you so much, Pastor Carolyn, for being being here. How are you doing, beloved? You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I am blessed. I am honored to be on today uh, to share with you. Yes, yes. And I I look forward to hearing, you know, segments of your story and just so, and I hope, and I look forward to our viewers hearing that as well. And, um, having such a soul expansion from it, you know, um, it's through our stories that, we are able to grow is through our stories that we're able to aid other people to also see themselves and also to also help them to grow as well. So definitely excited for you to be here. We here on Her Sacred Soul Space, we love to set the tone. We call it soul center. And we're just going to do three deep breaths. And we are just going for those breaths. We are going to be in a space of gratitude as well as a space of sending love in a space of selling healing to our pink sisters out there, okay? So let's get a moment, and we're going to do our first breath. And on this breath, we are just exercising gratitude for the fact that we can breathe. And exhale. And on the second breath, we are sending love to our pink sisters out there that may be afraid at this moment. We're sending that love to just hug them and exhale. And in our final breath, we're sending some healing vibration to our sisters as well. Let's see it, feel it, and release. Yes, yes, yes. That was beautiful. I love that. I love doing those three breaths because, you know, number three is very big for me. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you know, three is confirmational for me. So that is very, I love my breaths. Um, So share with us, share with us, Pastor uh, Lewis, when were you diagnosed and at what age did that occur? October 28, 2008 which this October the 28th, I will have 15 years surviving breast cancer. Um, I was uh, 36 years at the time of diagnosis. At that time, were you a pastor? I was an evangelist at that time. What stage were you diagnosed with? Stage two. Take us back to that moment or that day when you received that call or the news to say, unfortunately, we're showing that you have breast cancer. How did that make you feel? What happened was um, sitting casually uh, in my couch uh, after breastfeeding my now 16-year-old, 
I just touched my left breast and there was a very hard lump. And at the time, um, automatically, I thought it was the uh, milk glands. I stopped breastfeeding and I um, took the initiative and went to my physician and they did an ultrasound. And during that time when they came out, uh, the doctor came in with the nurse and the nurse put her arms around me and she said, Miss, the doctor said, Miss Lewis, it looks suspicious for cancer. Um, I had to go back about four days later to do some extensive tests where they did the, a biopsy. And about four days later, I was walking in Winn-Dixie and the call came and the doctor said, Miss Lewis, and I said, yes, he said the test came back conclusive. It is breast cancer. Um, at that time, you know, my faith and my trust in God um, was like never before, you know, going and hearing that it can be cancer. I lift my faith even more. And I remember um, the doctor say, you need to find an oncologist. And at the time, I didn't know what an oncologist was. And I, I said to her, I don't have an oncologist. She said, well, uh, we will refer you to one. And they did. And she said, Miss Lewis, you're in our prayer. And I said, thank you. And I remember hanging that phone up and I looked up in Winn Dixie and I said, God, you say in everything, give thanks. I say, and though I am afflicted today, I give you praise. And the tears was running down my eyes. And I remember putting my phone back in my purse and I continue shopping. So that's the God that I serve. <laughs> now that, that, that is big because regardless, we're human beings. So regardless of whether or not, you know, you're a Christian or you're not a Christian or you believe in God or not, for some of us, just hearing that alone can floor us. You know, the human part of us shows up first and then the spiritual side then seep in. And so you're telling me at that time, you put it back and you say, sealed, because I know you got this. So there's no need for me to worry. How did your family take the news when you went home? I thank God for my husband. Um, at the time, I was married for 17 years. In June, we had 31 years married. And um, my husband is, is my cover, my support, my backbone. And so uh, it was an experience for us. And I think during that time, our relationship was put to the test. And um, I remember calling him and, and telling him what was going on. I came home and when I got home, uh, he embraced me. And that was all I needed. Um, remember uh, telling him that the test was, you know, conclusive that it was breast cancer. Um, and it, it was so amazing. Um, during the time, my husband, he didn't want to do chemo. He didn't want to do any of that stuff. He uh, decided we're going to go out and we're going to look for some herbal medication. And so he went out and he bought about $300 worth of herbal medication and um, got to the doctor when it was time to go back to see uh, the oncologist. Uh, we got in there and uh, he was adamant about everything. And he said, um, well, we want to try this first. And, and the doctor looked at him and she said, I'm not downing the horrible medication. By the time that work, she'll be dead. So that changed everything right away for us. Um, for my mom, my poor mom, my dad called and he said, you need to talk to your mom because she walked the house all night and she's just crying and she's walking the house crying. My dad, he was in despair. Um, my sister was one who took it. Uh, the worst. Um, she ended up going into a, a, a shock, I would say, or, or, you know, just, just, just didn't want to. It, my sister ended up um, bleeding through her nose. Her pressure went to the high, and um, I then had to jump in to try to, you know, console them and to get them to a better place. And I, at that point, I said to them, I said, "Listen, I have a one-year-old, a five-year-old, and an eleven-year-old." And I'm not going to have a pity party with you guys. I got to get back in the ring because I got to fight for my children. So I need you guys to, you know, come in alignment with what needs to happen. So I look back today and I wonder, I know it was God because and he carried me during that time. I remember um, breaking down and crying probably twice. Uh, 
But during that time, I was in the fight for my life and I was determined that I was not going to, I love cancer to put me in a place of depression. I was not going, I didn't have time. I had, I thank God for the support that I had because I had so many people in and out. Um, I didn't have downtime. And I was grateful for that because I think um, having all of my family surrounding me, I mean, uh, going to the grocery store, taking my children to school, taking me to my appointment. And and um, that was a big help. So I, I didn't have a, a downtime to really go into that depression mood or um, I, I decided, no, I'm going to fight against this. I just had to digest that real quickly because, you know, they always talked about women having to be brave or be bold and thinking that we take so many things on our back as we carry so much weight. And I know when I was going through my journey there, I I did that as well. But one of the things that I wish I had done then was to allow those individuals to take care of me more. Like I was too much up doing things. I should have allowed my rest because Oftentimes when we're in a space of resting, it's because God is indeed preparing us for a mission, for another journey. So do you think that based on what we just talked about, you know, when you had all those individuals around showing you love, do you feel as if that was what God was doing for you as well? Giving you a place to rest, to lay your head because he had big plans for you? Most definitely. And um, I'm a person who I am so busy and um, sometimes I I put so much on my plate. And I think that that was his time saying it's time for you to take a minute to yourself. And um, it was a a, a humbling experience uh, going through breast cancer. Uh, It was a learning experience. Um, There was so much that came um, with that journey that I had to embark on uh, in 2008. But out of that, uh, God birthed purpose. Purpose was birthed out of God is bigger than cancer came out of that ordeal. And um, that's the organization that was birthed on my bed of affliction. Um, I can remember vividly uh, laying on my bed after uh, my reconstruction surgery that went horribly wrong. Uh, My breast was swollen to my chin and I could remember my chin was touching the breast. And and in the middle of that, I heard God is bigger than cancer. And I was like, okay, God, what are you saying? That's how um, this organization was birthed. And um, it is indeed a blessing uh, being able to give back. Um, For me, that was so important. during these last uh, 15 years, I've learned that um, there's so many people that are here that are going through um, breast cancer. And yes, we have a lot of different organizations. Um, but I think for me, it was getting down to the nitty gritty, uh, going to some of these people's houses and cleaning their house prior to to treatment um sitting and and praying with them embracing them these people who i didn't know from adam and eve and and um there were people that were here um from different countries that didn't have anybody didn't have family members and so for me i took that opportunity to embrace them because i had all my friends i had all my family that was surrounding me and i felt like oh my god it's so unfair that they don't have anyone their family some of them were in chile and in honduras and you know in different part of the country and um for me it was embracing those people during that time yeah it's a beautiful thing when you're able to walk with someone and because that helps you even more to birth into your purpose and to 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 see the essence of who you are the fragrance you know because now you're seeing yourself through other people's eyes the way they look at you you know and and you feel your heart bubble up with that joy, that peace, that gratitude, that thank you, God, for choosing me for a journey, for a path like this. And it's, it's huge. It's big. It's always, I always say not, well, everyone knows, hopefully that, um, when you give, it shifts a lot of things in your life and it makes you even more, even you could have a mountain of things on your plate, but when you give it, that mountain becomes a pebble. 
It's no longer, oh my God, whoa well, me, I have such and such to do. You feel good because you were able to do something for someone that didn't have anyone. So I am so, I am so glad. I'm so glad that you birthed into your light. And the light is L-I-T-E, which is living intentional through experience. And that's what you did. God is bigger than cancer. That's how you're living intentional through that. That and that is so beautiful. Do you did you have um, well, let's go to now. Do you have others who are there to help you now with those beautiful souls that are currently on their journey? Or is it still mainly you who take this mission up and do that for the sisters? No, not at all. Uh, God is bigger than Cancer Foundation. We have eight board members. I am the uh, president, CEO. Um, we have a um, host of people who assist us during this time. Um, after COVID, we got hit like everybody else. But um, we have um, a team that we work together. Um, in the past, I was the one who started up the organization and um, was doing it on my own with my own funds, with you know my own, not my strength, but God's strength. But uh, it was basically me reaching out to these people, and and it was so amazing because after I went through breast cancer, it seemed like if God was just putting people in my way, like I would go to the grocery store and I would look at somebody and I'm like, oh my God, either you see the scar here from the port or you see them with the sleeve or you see them with the hair, you know, the loss of the year. And, and, and then there was just a connection. I would just go up to them and I will begin to talk to them. And, 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 and that's where God allowed me to meet so much incredible people. Um, and again, going through breast cancer for me, uh, giving back and, and helping when I was in my lowest is what helped bring healing. Um, a, a lot of people don't realize that um, when you're selfless and you give yourself away to help someone else, you don't realize that God is restoring you during that time. And that's what happened with me. Yes, yes. Um, you became their breadcrumbs. For me, that's what I call them. I would go to lunch by myself and I, I, I remember this so clearly. I was sitting by the window because I wanted to look out. And then at the same time, I didn't want to feel weird sitting by myself eating lunch. So I said, let me just, I brought a book because I wanted to write anything that came up in my spirit. This is after I, I was diagnosed. And this lady was sitting there with her daughter. And all of a sudden she started talking to me and she was a stage three breast cancer survivor. And God has been placing those individuals when I was on that journey to make me not be afraid. So let's talk about fear. I'm just cutting my own story right now because I want to make sure they get some gems from you. Let's talk about fear because not everybody's faith is, is, is as strong as yours or even mine or, or you know, we go through that, basically. What is it that you'd like to say to those sisters that was just recently diagnosed regarding fear? Fear is something that automatically hits you like a ton of bricks. But in those times is when I begin to cry out to God, being diagnosed with breast cancer, I think I prayed then more than I ever prayed in my life. Um, and that's what kept me trusting him and just declaring his word over my life. Um, but the fear came. Um, I, I will sit here and, and not be honest if I tell you that it was not scary. Um, the one thing I thought about during that whole time was, God, what if? What is going to happen to my children? And um, I had to encourage, I certainly, surely see it would say, I had to encourage myself. And, and, um, you know, we have to get to a place where we can beat our spirit under subjection and begin to speak to that spirit man that will understand. I will not walk in fear. I decided, I said, I will not walk around with cancer written over my forehead. And so that was my, my, my go-to to just continue to fight. And I will declare over me, God, you didn't give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Um, so for me, um, my journey, it, it, it similar, but it was so much different because I trust God during that time where I couldn't trace him. I, I it's like, Everything I said, I breathe. I, I listened to my voicemail even up to a couple of weeks ago. And when I was diagnosed 16 years ago, coming October 28, when I was diagnosed, I remember uh, changing my voicemail. And 
um, and I know you heard, uh, leaving me a message, you heard the voicemail and, and it's Isaiah 53 and five, you were wounded for my transgression. You were bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of your peace was upon you. And by your strife, I am healed. And that is the scripture that I quoted every day. Yes, 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 yes. We have to find the one thing that we can, that you could hold in your heart, in your heart space. You know, going back to the lady, the reason why I asked about fear, because that's the one thing she said to me. She said, do not entertain fear. She said, it's going to be okay. Cancer feeds on fear and sweet. So don't eat, don't eat a lot of sweet and don't be fearful. And I, um, every time I would get into that space, that's the voice I would hear her say that, don't give into the fear, don't give into the fear. I remember I went into, I, at the time, I didn't really have much to say to God. I didn't know what to say. So I didn't say anything because I didn't understand it. And so because my grandmother was a praying woman, And she was blind. So I would have to read her her scriptures. So only thing I had at that time was the scriptures that I was reading my grandmother from I was five, six, seven years old. That was so much in my heart space. I had to regurgitate them in my mind when I lay on the bed because I didn't I didn't know what to say to God at the time. We weren't I, I wasn't mad at him. I just didn't know what to say. So I was just like, hey, let's just connect through a different way, you know. So um. It's beautiful when you have something to hold on to. And I want you to say something to our sisters. We talked about the ones who had just been diagnosed. We now have sisters who are going through treatments and the ones that who are finished with treatments and are in a space of, now what? What was this journey for? Where do I go? What would you want to say to them at this time? That's definitely, you know, searching through the spirit because I I didn't know where I was going to go from breast cancer and how I was going to survive after breast cancer. But there is life after cancer. Um, Like I said, the Lord give me on my bed of affliction. God is bigger than cancer. Um, However, for those who um, have gone through or even to the place where they're about to finish their treatment and um, wondering how they're going to survive. You thrive after cancer. You find yourself again. You find purpose. Uh, Look to God because he's the author and the finisher of our fate. So um, I know that he will direct your path and bring you into whatever it is that he has for you because Jeremiah 29 tells us he he knows the plan that he has for us. He says for good and not for evil. So even though going through breast cancer, it wasn't for It wasn't for my evil. It was for my good. And the Lord said to me that this testimony is for the nation. Hallelujah. Evil, it was for my good. And and so sometimes we go through things and the very sad thing that we go through is what God is going to use to catapult you and to get you into the place where he wants to take you. Out of this, my, my healing ministry was birthed. And so I didn't understand it during the time until after it was all over. And then I see now what God plan was for me going through breast cancer. And, you know, um, it is not an easy road uh, going through breast cancer. Everybody said to me, you made it look like it was pretty. You made it look good. Um, I was one who trusts me. <laughs> you see how I look today? I will walk into that breast cancer uh, center in my stiletto heels, dressed from head to toe. You would never catch me off guard. I promised myself I had every color wig, honey. And I said, no, you will not take me there. So you have to find yourself and, and it's a fight. You got to fight. Um, yes. Some days I didn't feel like getting up out of my bed, but I know that I had to go because guess what? I didn't want Aika, Ashanti and Anaya to see mommy down because they were used to seeing her pretty. And I did everything in my power for my kids not to see me in that position. And I give God thanks because I've dealt with so many uh, breast cancer patients over the years and the stories are different. And, 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 and I understand we all go through different things. Um, the chemo, it's, it's a deadly poison that goes into your body. It kills the good cell and the bad cell. And, um, some of us really suffer through it. But for me, I did six months of chemo and I never got sick one day. Um, I always uh, credit it to my mom. My mom, you know, I, I'm from Honduras originally, from the island of Rotan. And so um, my mother 
she would boil every bush that they told her is good for cancer. I said, listen, if the cancer didn't kill me, you would end up killing me with all of this bush. But I thank God because <laughs> it helped. It helped. I never got sick. Um, I was able to do my normal chore. I never got sick. I never got sick. Uh, the worst part of my cancer experience, again, like I said, and we will get into that, was when I did the reconstruction. Um, so, you know, I bless God for my mom. My mom would boil um, every everything that they tell her. Uh, boil this, boil that, drink this tea, drink that tea. And she had me every day taking all of my different teas. And, and I know, you know, that they, they tell you you can't take so much things, but that was that was something that helped me um, uh, from you know, having to to throw up or go through all of that stuff. I know some of that stuff um, was able to soothe my stomach. And um, and I thank God for that, you know. But, well, you know, us island girls, you can't tell island girls not to drink tea because we can't tell mommy don't give us the bush tea. We have to drink it. So listen, the, listen, we don't have no other choice. And we know growing up in the islands, the benefits from when we were kids, especially when it's time to go back to school. Um Let's touch in real quickly regarding the expansion, the um, or the expanders rather. Um, how talk to me about that part of your journey? Because I know for me that was most the hardest part. I didn't like it. I didn't like to see myself in the mirror. I didn't even know who I was. How? What did I make you feel? Because that's a shift now. That's from just that's from you know surgery, and now you have these two things inside that did not resemble what you had there before. Now, how did that shift you internally? Well, uh, for me, I didn't have that. I didn't have nothing. That breast was gone. And so looking in the mirror, it is one of the most, um, I I can't even find a word to say, uh, to look at yourself in the mirror and no breast and no hair. But I I thank God for my husband. I remember, and, and I want to share this. I remember um, after the second treatment, going into that cancer center, when I came home the next day, I was able to do this and it was just falling in my hands. And um, not knowing any better, a couple of days later, I said, oh my God, my hair is itching. I need to wash my hair. Not knowing that the hair was dead. So I went ahead and I washed my hair. And that thing not up like some bad sea feather. You're from the island, so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'm standing in the mirror and that thing is knotted up like a bad hair weave. And so um, I remember getting the scissors and I started to cut and I cut and cut. And when I look, I saw my husband coming in and I did this number. And he came and he pulled my hand down and he said, don't do that. He said, I don't love you because of your hair. I don't love you uh, because I love you because of who you are. And we're in this together. And he got his razor and he shaved my head ball. And when he finished, he kissed me on the ball head. And I think that was something that was free. I was free. I didn't have to hide. I didn't have to feel ashamed. And I know that that's difficult for some um, women that go through this because they don't have that type of support. And and I can say this because I've talked with many of them who during that time, their spouse left them. And so for me, I was free. And so looking in the mirror, yes, it was devastating. I didn't have expansion. I ended up doing a, tra- uh, a transplant, I think they call it. Yeah. Um, where they took uh, the, 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 the fat and made my breast back. That was a horrible experience. And um, I ended up with a hematoma. I went into surgery, for example, this morning at eight o'clock. And the next morning, when the doctor came in, he looked at me and he said, Miss Lou, when he examined me, he looked at me and he said, Miss Lewis, you have a hematoma. I'm looking at him like I'm crazy. What is a hematoma? And he says, Well, the blood is not circulating in the breast. And he said, We got to take you back into surgery. And that's when fear hit me. I look up at Memorial East and I said, oh, my God, one thing I prayed for. What do you do when you pray and ask God for a yes? And he says, no, was not to be able to. to, to, I didn't want to have a blood transfusion. And that was the very sad thing. I had to go back into another surgery within 24 hours of having surgery. I 
I didn't know if I was going to live to see the next day. That right there, the cancer experience, the chemo and all what I've been through during that process, fear gripped me then. And I, I just looked up and I said, God, I, I'm in your hands. I, 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 listen, like I say, it's a good thing. The Bible said pray in season and out of season. So we need to pray and store up those prayers because I couldn't even pray. <laughs> now, listen, I, listen, I am a prayer warrior. Yeah, listen, th- don't, I would pray until morning. But I look up in Memorial East and I was lost for word. And that's when he said, the spirit will make room and intercession for you. And that's all I had to depend on because I couldn't utter a word. I didn't know what to tell God. But he's an all-knowing God. That was a huge trust factor. He does that. That's the huge, it's like a curveball where he's going to say, are you going to trust me or are you going to trust me? Right? Yes. Huge curveball. I I don't know if all of us have it because I had my curveball too, but you know, I, and I laughed at it in the end. I laughed at it because I was like, Ooh, you, you are so funny. You are so funny. Not knowing that he was setting you up for where you need to be. Because there's sometimes when you go on that journey of becoming the light, of you being the one to walk with others, sometimes you too will have another curveball and you have to know how to trust the fact that you're not alone because you didn't put this in your head to do this. He did, which means I'm being with you and I'm guiding you. Oh my God, this has been so beautiful. I thank you for sharing. I want you to... um, Bless our sisters out there because we're holding space for them and bless the ones out there that don't have anyone to physically hold space. So spiritually, we're holding space. So can you say a word for those and those who are called to walk with those sisters? So give God, give them the strength as supporters as well to walk with those that don't have anyone to walk with them at this time. Father, we just bless you. We just honor you today. And we give you praise. You are an awesome God. We magnify you. We reverence you and we thank you because you're good, even on a bad day. So, Father, we come today touching and agreeing. You said where the two, one and two are gathered, touching and agreeing in your name, God, that you're there in the midst. So, Father, we lift up those today, God, that are newly diagnosed. We pray, God, that you will strengthen them, Father, that you will wrap your arms around them. Let them feel your presence, God, and let them know that you are near because your promise is that you will not leave us nor forsake us. Father, we pray for those that are going through right now, Father God, that are struggling through chemo. We ask right now, God, that you strengthen their body. We pray, oh God, that you lift up their spirit. We pray, God, that you will encourage them even during this time. We ask right now, oh God, for your healing touch, Father, because we know, God, that you are our Jehovah Rapha. You are, oh God, our bomb in Gideon. You are the one that heal our sin sick soul. We know today, God, hallelujah, that healing is the children's bread. So God, we thank you on today, Father. Lord, we pray right now for those, oh God, that have gone through and we ask right now, oh God, that you will strengthen them for the journey ahead, for the work that you have them to do. Father, we pray right now, God, that you will continue to abide with them. Father, we lift them up to you right now. And we ask, oh God, hallelujah, that you will strengthen them because your word say that when we are weak, you are strong. And we know, God, that you are a present help in the time of trouble. We pray, God, for direction. Father, God, help them not to lean onto their own understanding, God, but to acknowledge you so that you will direct their path, Father God. Lord, we pray right now that even in their season, Father God, that you will show them, oh God, hallelujah, your glory. Lord, that you will be Oh God, their solace in the time of trouble. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we leave those sisters now entirely into your hand and we pray the blessing of the Lord upon them that make rich and add no sorrow. And God, we give you the honor and we give you the praise. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was just beautiful. And beautiful souls out there that's on this journey, know you're not alone. Trust me, you are not alone. Um, look up, God is bigger than cancer if you're in Miami, Florida. Yes, yes, God is bigger than Cancer Foundation. 
Yes, yes. Um, tell a friend to tell a friend. We're all here to help. And physically, you may think you're alone. Spiritually, you're not. Trust me. Your sisters are praying. Your sisters are holding space for you. Believe and trust and know that you are going to get through this and that you are not alone. We love you. And one love. One love always. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I would be honored if you could share this episode with a friend, subscribe, rate, and review. Don't forget to join us every second and fourth Fridays for another exciting episode of Her Sacred Soul Space podcast. I'd love to hear your comments. You can always find me on Facebook or YouTube as Her Sacred Soul Space. Until then, one love and don't forget, see your light, be your light. Magan. <laughs>